Um, but without, uh, without further uh, ado, um, I'm going to introduce uh, Yasutomo Ota uh, from the University of Tokyo, um, where I guess it'll be uh, four o'clock um, at the moment. Um, so uh, Yasutomo is going to be telling us about hybrid integration based on transfer printing for scalable silicon quantum photonics. All right, take it away. No, no, no. Sorry. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry for the confusion a bit. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, though I'm enjoying good evening in Japan. I'm Yasuto Moja from the University of Tokyo. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers to provide me this pre uh, precious opportunity. It is sad that I could not visit Bristol and could not make face-to-face -face conversation with many wonderful researchers. Um, but anyway, uh, today I'll make my best effort to talk about our recent work on hybrid integration of quantum dots on silicon photonic circuit towards scalable quantum information processing. Okay, so here's a message on my talk today, uh, which is the transfer printing is a powerful way for hybrid integration on existing photonic integrated circuits. Um, uh, to tell this, uh, I prepared this content today. I'll start from the introduction about hybrid integration and we'll talk about its necessity and the bottlenecks toward large scale uh, quantum photonic integrated circuits fixed. Then I propose that transfer printing could be a possible solution for the issues. After that, uh, using transfer printing, I show our recent works uh, such as Shingleton sources on silicon, cavity QED systems on silicon, and so forth. Among them, I'll spend most of the time for Shingleton sources. So let me begin with the introduction. Um, I think as has been discussed in this conference repeatedly, uh, it is now widely recognized that the use of PICS is a promising approach for large-scale quantum photonics. Uh, they provide stable, large-scale functional photonic circuits. Importantly, uh, such large-scale peaks are available from commercial foundries, uh, which means that uh, you can get your own optical circuit uh, just by the design and asking the factory to fabricate it. Uh, the most notable uh, one is the silicon photonics, and you may be able to implement this type of complex quantum peaks uh, without process development. Uh, this is a really nice story of the development for future complex systems. However, the situation is not so simple. Uh, even though you have large scale circuits, uh, your operation may not be scalable for a large number uh, of quantum. In order to perform scalable quantum information processing, every single device integrated on the circuit should behave nearly ideally. And the bad news here is as far as you use a single material on your circuit, uh, it is so difficult to meet the strict requirements from quantum algorithms. But if you use different materials, uh, you can prepare high performance elemental devices uh, such as on-demand Shingleton sources by Ingium Arsenal quantum dots and the highly efficient Shingleton detectors uh, by superconductor nanowires as discussed uh, in other talks in this conference. And uh, given this situation, uh, it is obvious that uh, material hybridization is essentially required for building functional, uh, fully integrated quantum peaks. However, uh, hybrid integration for large scale atomic circuit is in general very tedious to perform. The first reason of the difficulty is as far as you use process foundry for making peaks, uh, you need to further strict rules of the processing. Uh, if you use conventional technique uh, like, a, for, like a wafer bonding, uh, you may not be able to keep the compatibility of your material uh, to the facilities of the process foundries. Moreover, process optimization would be uh, very complicated if you, if you process your device on the complex uh, hybrid reverts. The second reason is the randomness in the solid state quantum elements. Uh, here is an example of self-assembled quantum dots. Uh, they are famous in the variation of the emission wavelengths 
and the even position of each quantum root. Uh, this kind of randomness always exists for, for solid state quantum elements, and uh, which make it difficult to properly integrate each element on circuit. So a different technique of hybrid integration will be increasingly important for realizing future hybrid quantum peaks. Uh, so here, I'd like to introduce a new and a powerful approach for hybrid integration, uh, which is transfer printing. And the overview of transfer printing is summarized here. For transfer printing, uh, first you prepare your photonic device in the form of air bridge. In our case, we prepare a quantum of light sources based on nanobeam photonic crystallicalities. Then you pick up a structure using a rubber stamp and uh, you attach a transparent rubber on the structure and quickly peel off the stump, then you can pick up uh, one of them. Uh, for assembly, uh, you bring the lifted structure above a photonic circuit, then simply attach it on the structure, on the circuit. After that, uh, you slowly peel off the stump. Now you find that only the quantum of the light source remains on the circuit. Uh, the structure are connected by Van der Waals force such that the any type of material should be compatible for printing. And all the printing uh, process can be done after the completion of the peak process so that the, this, uh, is, this technique is fully compatible with the peak's backend process. Moreover, you can separately optimize your own quantum elements, uh, which will help achieving the best possible performances of the devices. In addition, uh, you can over overcome the issue of the property variation by selecting the suitable quantum elements prior to the transfer. So overall, uh, we consider that transfer printing could be a key enabling technology for hybrid integration uh, for uh, large-scale quantum peaks. So then, uh, now I'd like to discuss some of our experimental demonstrations using transfer printing. First, I will talk about Shingleton sources hybrid integrated on silicon. Uh, here, uh, let me show the design of our photon source suitable for uh, transfer printing. The structure is composed of photon crystal nanotube cavity placed above a glass cladded silicon waveguide. The cavity supports a high Q, high Q factor of a million when not coupled to the waveguide and uh, have a very a small model volume uh, close to the diffraction limit. Uh, the uh, small mode volume results in a large parcel effect, uh, which ensures high coupling of the quantum mode uh, into the cavity mode. Uh, wave, when placing the cavity over the waveguide, uh, they couple each other via evanescent field, uh, which reduces cavity Q factor to a thousand or so, uh, all due to the coupling to the waveguide. And in this design, a very high coupling of the quantum mode uh, into the waveguide uh, is possible uh, with an uh, efficiency of 99%. Uh, uh, by carefully controlling the distance between the uh, uh, cavity and the waveguide, by controlling the thickness of the glass cloud. So this design is also robust against, against misalignments accompanied by the transfer printing. Uh, even with slide or rotation of the cavity with respect to the waveguide, uh, we can maintain a high coupling uh, more than 99%. Uh, the level of misalignment discussed in this slide uh, is easily achievable by our transfer printing machine, uh, which will be uh, discussed later. So now ex I explain more details of the fabrication. First, you prepare uh, nanobeam cavities containing injury arsenal quantum on the gallium arsenal wafer. Uh, this is an SEM picture uh, of a cavity together with a supporting structure and then then we pick up an nanobeam by using a rubber, as shown here. And in the meantime, uh, we order the silicon photonic chip to a process foundry. Uh, since uh, we use a March project wafer, we cannot uh, choose a crud thickness so that we control it by using a dry chain based on the uh, fluorine and the argon based gas in our lab. After that, uh, we just transfer the singleton source on the circuit and the integration is all done at this step. It's really simple. And uh, here, let me show our transfer printing machine. Uh, here we have our photonic chip. 
and the uh, gallium arsenide wafer having the uh, photon sources. And the rubber stamp is attached on the glass plate here. They are connected to the, uh, these positioners. And uh, we use this positioner for picking up and placing the light sources on the circuit. And uh, during the operation, uh, we monitor the samples using the optical microscope placed here. And uh, this is a camera image during printing. Uh, even with this level of image, uh, we can do uh, really high accuracy of printing. Uh, indeed, uh, this is a microscope image of an integrated device. Uh, you can see nice alignment uh, between the source nano beam and uh, the waveguide underneath. We find that the accuracy of printing is better than 100 nanometer, uh, which is sufficient for maintaining high coupling between the photonic elements. Uh, this is a sample we optically characterize at the low temperatures. Uh, when pumping the cavity as here and the imaging sample, uh, we see that the light exits uh, from the output port as in this image. Uh, this suggests that uh, there is good optical coupling between the cavity and the waveguide, even when simply printing the cavity on the chip. Then with a reduced pump power, we take a pair spectrum as the output port. Uh, and confirm that single quantum the peak together with a strong cavity peak there. And the, the quantum that is subject to the pass effect with a pass factor of about two or more, and that together with the measure of the reduction of the Q factor due to coupling to the uh, waveguide, uh, we roughly estimated that quantum, quantum dot uh, waveguide coupling efficiency uh, uh, of about 70% for this particular device. Then uh, we performed an autocorrelation measurement uh, of the quantum dot emission at the output port and confirmed that the single photon emission. Uh, this result indicates that the quantum dot is cooled sufficient to isolate to a single quantum level, even though it is just printed on the circuit. Uh, the but G20 value of about 0 0.3 uh, is due to high density of the quantum dot uh, in the wafer and the resulting in the resulting strong background emission uh, coupled to the cavity mode. We think that uh, this can be easily overcome uh, by using other quantum dot wafer having lower density of dots. Uh, we have also tried to integrate two singleton source on a single chip. Uh, their emission is masked on, uh, uh, on this chip using this uh, MMR coupler here and exited from this output port. And in order to individually tune the frequency of the quantum dot, we additionally transfer a uh, light driven heat impact on the photon source as shown here. So we measure the laser and heat up this part and tune the emission wavelength of the quantum dot. Uh, this is a PS spectra measured at this output port uh, showing two quantum dot peaks from the uh, two devices. Uh, when heating uh, just one of the two sources, we observed the shift of one peak and the merging of the two quantum peak uh, into one as shown here. Uh, this is an important step toward realizing quantum interference between photons emitted from dissimilar sources on a single chip. Uh, we are also working on further improvement of the light source efficiency. Uh, in the older design discussed in the previous slides, uh, photons coupled to the waveguide propagate to the two directions so that the half of photons will be wasted. So we designed a structure for unidirectional output. Uh, we introduced a uh, air hole based uh, photon crystal mirror in the silicon waveguide and uh, try to reflect back one of the guided modes. Uh, in this setup, uh, there are two optical paths uh, with and with reflection uh, at the mirror and they interfere in the waveguide. Uh, if the interference is destructive, uh, the source efficiency will be uh, will become very worse. So uh, we introduce sub wavelength grating uh, structure to facilitate the constructing interference by reducing the effective index of the waveguide. Uh, with the numerical simulations, we confirm that the over 99% um, uh, of the coupling of quantum modelization into the unidirectional waveguide mode uh, is possible. Uh, we have already exper experimentally confirmed the operation of this optical structure and the single photon emission uh, from this structure. We will report the results in somewhere. 
uh, we have also uh, been working on the other types of the hybrid photonic structures. Uh, I'd like to introduce some of them in the following slides. Uh, first one is a cavity QED system in strong cup regime on silicon. Uh, in this case, we increased a uh, cavity Q factor of the printed device to about uh, 8,000. 8, uh, with this high Q cavity, we observed a strong coupling between a single quantum dot and the cavity mode. Uh, the observed anti-crossing and the vacuum large spectra is unclear. Uh, this is uh, again due to the uh, low quality of the quantum dot layer, having too much quantum dot and the quantum dot line width is too broad to clearly observe this uh, phenomena on this tip. Uh, anyway, uh, we consider that uh, the strong, strongly coupled system would be promising to introduce a strong and single photon level chi 3 nonlinearity uh, on silicon uh, quantum photonic chips. And also by simply increasing the number of quantum dots in the cavity, uh, we have also realized uh, quantum dot nanolasers on silicon. Uh, the, this type of efficient uh, low power consumption laser might be useful for driving other optical devices like a single photon sources uh, on the integrated on the same chip. Uh, this is not on silicon, but we also utilize the transfer printing for realizing uh, quantum prosmonic sources. Uh, in this case, we utilize an atomically flat silver uh, deposited on silicon 111 surface uh, realized by tailored deposition and annealing conditions. Uh, by printing a micro ring cavity on the surface, uh, it was possible to realize a high quality plasmonic mode resonator coupled to a single quantum dot. And uh, by low temperature optical measurement, uh, we have confirmed that the pulse enhanced uh, radiative emission from the quantum dot and the single photon or single plasma uh, emission uh, from the quantum dot. And uh, another interesting combination is a two-dimensional material on photonic crystal nanocavity. Uh, in this case, we cut uh, gallium arsenic nanocavity to a black phosphorus, uh, which is a two-dimensional material capable of anything light in the near infrared. And uh, to tell the truth, our transfer technique is the same as used in the uh, two-dimensional material research. Uh, you can dig out that our work is an extension of the technique of uh, the technique for quantum nanophotonics. So finally, uh, let me summarize uh, my talk. Uh, today, I have discussed that transfer printing uh, is a powerful way for hybrid integration on existing fix. Uh, with this method, we have demonstrated uh, various uh, hybrid devices, including Shingleton sources on silicon, uh, and this is the last slide, uh, and this is a, a dream cutter that we can imagine now. Uh, maybe we can mix up very different materials on a single photon chip uh, if you're using transfer printing. Uh, and we believe that with this type of photon chip, uh, we may be able to pursue highly functional, uh, fully integrated quantum photon circuits uh, having broad applications. So thank you for your attention. And uh, any comments and the questions are welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yes, Trevor. Um, we have about 120 people uh, watching this morning. Uh, so thank you to all of you for coming along. Um, now uh, we have time for a few questions. Uh, and also thank you for sticking right to time. Um, let, me, uh, let me start off um, by asking one of my own. Uh, so this uh, scaffolding structure, can you hear me, Yasutomo? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Um, this scaffolding structure, uh, which you also use for heating the sources, um, uh, does it know. introduce any scattering losses of its own? Uh, no, so actually the, even pass through this type of the uh, structure just above the waveguide, they do not scatter light because of the low coupling between the structure and the uh, uh, waveguide. Actually, okay. the cavity is only you know, designed well for coupling to the webguide and the other structure does not couple very well. Oh, great. Um, all right, so we have a few questions appearing now. Um, so uh, un unnamed Alex um, asks, could you use this technique to fabricate arbitrary hybrid structures like a photon source in any material uh, and the remaining circuitry in silicon? 
yeah, that is our hope. So that uh, I think the any material having the flat surface can be transferred to the photonic chip uh, using this technique, I think. So that uh, eventually maybe we can integrate any type of materials, devices on the single chip. And the uh, location, we, we can selectively you know, integrate uh, any type of material, any location of the circuit. So this is really flexible. All right, fantastic. Um, another question from Alex Clark. Uh, would you prefer to have dots at longer wavelengths, like 1550? Yeah, yeah. It's, Probably it's, yes is the answer. It's really, really important. So that the silicon is, of course, transparent at the 1.1 at the low temperature, but the functionality of the 1.1 is not so nice. And if, we, if I can extend the wavelength from, to the 1.55, I can use a very conventional silicon photonic circuit elements. And then we can, I, I can improve the performance of the circuit, of course. So of course, try to 1.55 is really important. And uh, actually we are trying, we are trying now. All right, great. Um, a question from Ruth Ulton uh, of Bristol. Um, very nice devices from your group, as usual, Professor Ota. How do you achieve high density and low density quantum dots on the same wafer? Uh, actually, in this case, we just use the high density wafer. Uh, using very commercial technique of quantum dot growth. Uh, so that at the room temperature, it's anything around uh, 1.3 and the uh, cooling it down, it becomes like a 1.1 1 .1, uh, at the tail, short wavelength tail of the uh, quantum dot ensembles. And uh, we did not any do, it did not do any optimization of the growth for this case. Uh, we need a uh, low density, high quality quantum dot in the future. And uh, we are also thinking about that. Okay, all right. Um, let's have one more. Um, so Jorge asks a question about alignment and I'm gonna supplement this. Um, so Jorge asks, can you quantify the thermomechanical misalignment when cooling the devices and how do you compensate for it? And I would follow that on um, by asking whether you've considered a, a self-aligning structure, if such a structure is possible. Uh, I have never think about that kind of a thermal induced misalignment or so. Mm, I've never seen the uh, movement of the device or shrinking or enlarging of the device due to the cooling. So I think e even with the introduction of the strain due to the thermal change, thermal situation change, the device may seems really robust, I think, even with the transfer printing. Maybe adhesion between the structure is really strong and uh, can Resist, can be resisted about the uh, strain by heating. Yeah. Fantastic. And self-aligning? Self-aligning devices? Self-aligning uh, self devices, mm, I'm not sure. Yeah, it might be possible, but uh, never think about that. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Well, um, thank you again.